Hello everyone, welcome back to SFDC Ninja and I'm excited to share another interesting figure scenario with you. This scenario is very important because it was asked in Cognizant interview. So without wasting any more time, let's get started. Let's talk about this scenario. In this scenario, we need to calculate the number of grandchild records and display them on the parent record. Let me break it down for you. Let's say we have an account record which contains child opportunity record on it. And on this opportunity record, opportunity line items are present which are nothing but products added to the opportunity. Now our goal is to calculate the number of opportunity line item records and display that count on custom field of account object. So this is our today's scenario. It's time to code. So let's dive into coding process. Let's switch to VS Code and create our handler class. Let's say TRG controller. Wait, 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 wait. Guys, there is a problem. See account and opportunity line item are not connected with any relationship. So because of this reason, the problem is how we are going to identify that which opportunity line item record is connected to which account record. But don't worry, I have a solution. The parent of opportunity line item is opportunity object and opportunity is the child of account. So what we need to do, we need to fetch opportunity ID from opportunity line item records and using that opportunity ID, we can fetch account ID. So this way we can connect the account and opportunity line item records. So let's create our method public static void trg method since the changes are happening on opportunity line item objects and we need to calculate count of it therefore we will pass list of opportunity line item as parameter in this method so let's pass the list opportunity line item let's say only list now our first step is to store the opportunity ID of opportunity line item in a set. So for that, let's create a set to store it. Set ID, let's name it OPP ID, new set ID. And let's apply a null check on this list. Is empty, iterate over it. OPJ and store opportunity ID in a set. Dot add Now we have opportunity ID in a set. Now we will apply another null check on this set so that our further code will only be executed if this set contains a value. So let's apply a null check on this set. Now our next step is to fetch the account ID of opportunity using opportunity ID present in a set. For that, we will create a list, list of opportunity, OPP list, select ID, account ID from opportunity, where ID in OPP ID. Let's apply a null check on this list. This is empty. Iterate over it. Now this is where the main part of our code comes in. So we are going to create a map to store the account ID and the count of opportunity line item records. So let's create a map like this. ID decimal, let's say only map decimal, copy its name. Now we will put account ID in key of this map and zero in value like this. Account ID. Now the question is why we are initializing zero in this map. So we are initializing zero because at the beginning we do not know how many opportunity line item records are associated with each account. So we set the count to zero. Later on, we will update the map with the actual count of opportunity line item records for each account. Now we also have account ID in our map. 
Now what we will do? We will use aggregate query to count opportunity line item records. So let's use aggregate query. Result. Select ID. Dot account ID. Boom. Opportunity line item. Where it's opportunity account ID is in our map. Dot key set. Here we have not used any aggregated function on this field. Therefore, we need to group it. So let's group it. Group by opportunity dot account ID. And now we will put account ID and count in our map like this. Dot put ID dot get account ID. decimal dot get copy in this variable name and paste it here so we have count of opportunity line item records and map now we need to update account object field by this count so let's iterate over key set of this map which has the account id let's iterate over it acc id only map dot key set. Let's create an instance of account. ID will be CC IDs, and we will update this field by count of opportunity line item records, which is present in values of our map. So let's copy its name, paste it here. And we will use get method to get it like this. Dot get. See in this map, account ID is the key. So we are passing account IDs in get method to get the values. And the values of this map contains the count of opportunity line item records. Now to bulkify our code, we will not update account record inside for loop. For that, we will create a list. Let's say list of account list to update your list account copy its name and add these account records in it dot add hcc now we will update this list outside for loop so let's apply a null check dot is empty and perform dml on it update this to update. Here we can also improve this code by applying error handling in it. For that, what we will do, we can use try and catch method. So let's enclose this update operation inside try method and exception system dot debug error while updating. Country code. Dot get message. Save it and deploy it to org. Okay, it is successfully deployed. Now we have our handler class ready. Now let's create our trigger. Let's name it. Grandchild TRG. Since we need to update count on insertion or deletion of opportunity line item records, therefore our trigger will be on opportunity line item with after insert and after delete events. So let's write opportunity line item here with after insert and after delete event. Now the important thing is we need to pass trigger.new as parameter on insert event and for delete event 
we need to pass trigger.old because trigger.new returns the new version of records and you cannot have new version of records after deletion so let's apply a check of after first for insert event is insert copy our class name paste it here method name and pass trigger.new secondly for delete event trigger.is delete copy this line paste it here trigger.old save it and deploy it to work Okay, it is successfully deployed. Now we have our trigger ready. It's time to test our trigger. So let's go to our org. Let's go to account. This account has this opportunity. So let's go to this opportunity and add some product on it. Click on next quantity. Let's say one. Save it. Let's add another product. Go to account and refresh it. So this field is showing two. Because at present, two products are present on its child opportunity record, which means our trigger is working fine for insert operation. Let's check for delete operation. For that, let's delete a product. Refresh it again. Now it is showing one, which means our trigger is working fine for delete operation also. Let's delete last product also. Refresh it again. So guys, as you can see, our trigger is working fine for both insert and delete operation. That's it for today guys. And I'll be back with more interesting trigger scenarios. Thank you.